Hello everyone and thank you for checking in for another sales update. This week we have uh, 18 items that I wanted to go over with you from the lab that sold in the last week of May 2016 and uh, I had some I had some nice sales. It wasn't the busiest week but um, we still had some nice sales in the eBay store. Also if you look there's going to be a link that pops up. I published my uh, sales income report for the month of May also just yesterday so if you click on that link it'll open it up in a new window and you can check it out after this video if you want and it kind of gives you the breakdown of my first full month uh, full time on eBay uh, and like some of the merch by Amazon and stuff and and the website how the website's going for me so far so if you want to check that out and leave me some feedback I'd appreciate it uh, there's places for comments over there or you can also just always comment in the uh, YouTube video but uh, we'll, we'll get started with the sales update. So the first item I sold this week was a Hugo Boss uh, Slim Fit uh, Stretch. So some of the Hugo Bosses don't go for that great money in the dress shirts. But if you find them in the Slim Fit, they they do much better. So if you see the Slim Fit in the with the Hugo Boss tag like this, like, Definitely pick it up if it's a good pattern because they do they pull a little better profit and the the spread collar definitely helped too um, because that's definitely in more than the point. Uh, the second item I had this in my inventory for quite a while. I'm gonna say since January uh, of this year, and uh, I took a best offer uh, for this for twenty nine ninety nine I think. Uh, Maybe a little less, maybe twenty-six dollars or something. But it was a five XL, so I thought it was gonna do really, really well. But I didn't get a lot of views, and um, I mean, it's a white shirt. It's humongous, uh, but it did sell. Someone gave me an offer, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll get it out of there." It sat long enough, so um, was happy to get that out of my inventory. Uh, the next one was a specialized bicycle jersey. I, th I think that's what you call these. Um, I've been looking at these a little more carefully now. This did have a small, tiny flaw in it right there. Um, right there. But, uh, yeah, these were going for good money. Um, this one sold for $27.99. Exactly what I was asking for it, I think, within two days. So maybe priced a little low, but still, I'm happy with that. I got this for $3, I think. So, um I see cycling jerseys a lot, um, but so a lot of the times they're promotional uh, with like a company name or something like that. So if you guys don't mind, if, if you sold bicycle jerseys or cycling jerseys before, leave some comments down below on, on your thoughts on that. Do you pick up like companies? Like you can tell it's a local company. Um, so maybe if you're sourcing around like my area, there might be a Wegmans jersey or something like that. Like, would you still pick those up? Will they still sell well? I'd like some uh, feedback on that. Uh, what you guys think about picking up local company or local branded cycling jerseys? Is is it worth picking up for a couple bucks? Uh, the next item was a Brooks Brothers uh, 1818. This is just a suit jacket. Um, let's see if I can get the tag for you guys. Um, this when you see this tag, it's usually uh, this is the nicer line. This the Fitzgerald and the Madison are the nicer line in the suit jackets, and they give you the me both measurements here for the the pit to pit and the in the waist, which is the lower measurement, which I don't usually use. But um, this sole, I took a best offer on this, I think for fifty, um, which is good. Uh, and this I've had sitting for a while. I can tell by the old backdrop. This is been in my inventory for probably about four months so like i said i have a lot of long tail items like this that will sit for a while um but I, i'm happy with that sale and um now instead of waiting for these i have them priced high like i know i have them priced high um but instead of waiting and like you know just i'm taking offers like i'd rather move it it's still a wicked awesome uh, ROI um, when I'm paying six or seven dollars. So uh, here was a Brooks Brothers. This is a rare find for me, and I'm sure you guys can agree if if you're selling shirts at all. This is a slim fit non iron Brooks Brothers shirt, but the kicker is it's white and it was cleaned and no stains. So when I I usually don't even look at the white shirts closely because I'm like, uh, 
but uh there was very few shirts on on the rack at this one store and there was a lot of brooks brothers and this one was really nice and i know like if you find a white shirt that's a good brand um you should always pick it up if it's if it's flawless because it will sell for good money because there's not as many of them out there that aren't stained or have pit stains or the hot dog ketchup or mustard stain okay um the next item uh still these jeans are still popping off not for huge numbers this one sold best to offer for 15 um, and i took it uh just a regular pair of american eagle jeans i have been picking these up at garage sales now for a buck or two and um like i like that return that's good for me like it, they're really easy to list i don't even include measurements if you look down here um like this is my item description and i haven't had any problems so very easy to list um and it, if you guys have been watching my previous videos um i have changed up the way I, i'm listing my items and it's I'm able to cruise through these listings a lot faster. I stopped using a camera. I'm only using my cell phone. I'm still taking decent pictures, I think. Like, they're still coming out good. And I'm doing it all through the eBay app. So, uh, like, my my descriptions are really simple. I actually, like, copy and, and paste the description once um, at the start of my day. And then I'm literally just going in there and hitting paste and I'm doing use, but not abuse, handpick and inspect it for the best quality. And then the, if there's a flaw, I'll mention it, um, in the item condition up here. If not, I leave it blank. And then I'm really only doing basic keywords that are needed and it has been working out good. So, um, this item, uh, was just a standard non iron right here. And this is kind of an older tag, but, um, it, 1999 this was only up for a couple days and like these usually do not so these usually sit for a while so but again i know i'm getting off topic here um with the titles just right there there's really not much like i see a lot of people stuffing tags and when i was selling similar um people were stuffing keywords in their item descriptions and a lot of them don't even have to do the like they're not needed so don't go overboard because a buyer, when they see that, I feel like they're like, well, what's going on with the title? It doesn't even make sense um, when they have all these extra keywords. Um, so yeah, I think keeping it basic has been paying off. Like on the suits, I will put my measurements there, but like very basic look. And with that new, um, I know Jason T. Smith uh, has been talking a lot about it. They're not even gonna show like your full, um, like that full run I used to use. So um, I wouldn't bother. So here's a suit I sold. It was a Brooks Brothers, uh, just a stretch shoot, suit. I took a best offer for 50 for this. Um, here's what the tag looks like. Um, three, four, six, stretch. These, uh, these do sell, not for as much as a lot of the other suits. This is probably like 50, 49 to this is probably the high end on the spectrum for those, for this uh, style of the Brooks Brothers. Um, but if you can get them for the right price, $15 and under, they're worth picking up all day, I, I think. Um, but uh, just be careful. So with getting into suits, uh, prices are much higher uh, on stuff. So you, I'm still like practicing on where the, the, the money line is kind of. So... I'm not afraid to pay twenty, thirty dollars, but some of this when you start paying like twenty four dollars and up for a suit, they're gonna go for eighty dollars plus usually. Um if you if you're picking the right brands. But you gotta make sure there's no flaws and then once you start paying like I was in when I was in New York City this last week, they were pricing suits at twenty nine to thirty nine, sometimes more. And um I didn't buy it. I had one that I wanted to buy a really nice Hugo Boss one and then I found a cut in the pants below like a very small it was like a in the crotch of the the pants there was a, a line about four inches long so you couldn't even see it but it was actually a tear in in the seam so I, I was really lucky I've been really uh inspecting things a lot closer so I was really 
proud of myself that I caught that and didn't go in the hole for $30 for that because I wouldn't have been able to return it. Um, even though that suit would have sold for like $180. So don't get excited. Like make sure you inspect everything and um, it'll give you, it'll reward you in the end. Um, if you're going to start going after some of these uh, higher quality items. Um, these were some of the suits. I bought a ton of Joseph A. Bank suits um, when I was in Virginia. And uh, $14 a piece. And they're going to be selling. This is the price range that they sell around um, for the standard ones. Um, these aren't signature gold or platinums. Uh, it's just a standard Joseph A. Bank suit. So these sell, but not for a lot. Um, but definitely worth the, the profit there. Um, so this is what my pictures are looking like on the suits. And I just started doing these. That's why I'm spending a little more time on them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's a, uh, and I'm getting the pants shot in just once to show, are they pleated or are they flat front? I'm not going any deeper into the pants than that. Uh, same thing. Oh, this is a Burberry. This one sold for my asking price, I believe. This is an older uh, style one. You can tell that the pinstripes are wide. Definitely an older style Burberry suit. Um, it's got the older tag. Uh, but this, you know, this is another one. I was picking these up for like 15 10 $15. So that was a really good flip. And here, so I think I mentioned this last weekend. I'm going to start moving away from these a little more unless I'm picking them up for super cheap. But uh, this was, it says blazer, but really a suit jacket. This has been in my inventory for a long time um probably three three months uh so these do move a lot slower the suits are moving faster so that's kind of where i'm going with those even though these are going like i took a best offer on this for 19 dollars, i think uh no i didn't the sold at the sale sorry so 22.49 um still like that's not bad like that's not a bad i'm still getting just about 50 percent roi which is what my goal is for any purchase so not going to argue the price it just they they're sitting longer than I, than i i like and i want to start using my turning my money a little more quickly but uh here's a charles T or i can't say that tirewit 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 yeah um pinpoint weave this is cool cuz it had the off white collar and the and then the stripes it's probably going to sell for more, but I just moved it quick. Um, these do tend to sit a little uh, longer than they used to now because the market's a little saturated, I think. Um, but I still love picking these up, especially if they have good... Um, this is because this isn't a non-iron, um, uh, but they still have a like good following um, for the brand. Now, the non-iron ones, which I picked up a bunch this weekend, they sell a lot better. Um, so, slim fit non-iron, the same with, with the Charles uh, Tirewit, Tirewit. Uh, Robert Talbot, uh, I picked up a bunch of these. Another one sold this week. This had purple black checks. Went to the same got same gentleman that purchased the other two, and um, he's return buy buyer. He followed me. He said, "If you find it any more, you know, let me know." I took a best offer from him, thirty four ninety nine, because he's been back a couple times, so that's cool. Uh, here is a brand that I've talked about in the past. Um, this is a really good brand, cool. I don't know if I'm saying that right either, but um, this is kind of like a pair of board shorts, uh, hiking, hiking board shorts. Uh, they sold really quick. I had them listed for like two days, and someone gave me an offer for twenty four ninety nine, and I took it. Uh, here was another one of Brooks Brothers non iron. Uh, this was just this had a really cool pattern on it actually, and it had French cuffs. So. French cuffs seem to do good too because there's not as many of them. I always put a picture of them in there so if the buyer doesn't look at the title, they see it there. Um, but this is a cool micro check type thing, uh, shirt pattern, and um, this sold good, twenty one ninety seven. And last sale for the week was a pair of Levi five eleven slim fits. Uh, this had a nice like darker wash to it, size thirty by thirty two. Um, 
pretty standard with the pictures. This is what I'm doing with the jeans, just literally laying them out and getting as many angles as I can quick on a white table. And that's that sold for seven.